Do you know what today is besides being super hot? It's awesome because I think this is the day that I've enjoyed making YouTube videos the most and I think it has a lot to do with that fact that I'm just running with the flow today. I already actually made six videos, recorded them at least and it was just so great being more casual, talking with the cam like it would be a friend of mine and I think that translates well over the screen. I don't know, maybe you can tell me but for this video today this is also important because this will be my most challenging video ever because I've never compared more than two laptops with each other. Today though I have five and not just five, five of the very best ones. And the video will be there for very long and I will try to make it not all the drive for everyone to be actually be satisfied watching this, but also very informative. What I'm not going maybe to do is kind of like put a proper rating in terms of first place, second place on everyone because they are so close and they have different strengths and, and weaknesses. And I want to definitely point those out more than anything else. And since I won't be able to put all five on the screen like on phones, this will be a little bit of a challenge because I will do it one by one because I actually had to put the extra desk here. But besides that, what are the five that I've chosen? The Surface Laptop, obviously. Then the Huawei MateBook X, definitely also amazing. The Dell XPS 13, because someone asked me to include that, that's why it is here. But why, why I like it also, the XPS 13 2-in-1 and also due to a request, the X360 from Spectre. They are all at around 13, 1400 euros, at least here in Germany. Of course, wherever you are, it could be a little bit different, but they are definitely well worth being compared to each other. And all you have to do is watch my video, kind of maybe sometimes read between in the lines what I think about each one, and then choose your winner. Actually, you, co you can't really go wrong with either one, but one could definitely be more fitting to you than another one. So let's get into the first thing, the design. And let's start off with the Surface Laptop. I like it a lot. It feels great, but it's not super compact. It could be maybe a tad little bit smaller, especially compared to something like the Huawei MateBook X. You can just see that this is just so much more portable. It's also way more lightweight, thinner. And yeah, this is nice. Also in terms of ports, it's just not the best one. Just USB type A and the display port along with the headphone jack. That is it. So even though it's great, I think for the money, you don't quite get what you would expect. So yeah. Very nice, but there is possibility to, and room for more. But you won't really get much more in terms of ports on the Huawei MateBook X as well, because only USB Type-C here, not even Thunderbolt, and one headphone jack along with the second USB Type-C here, also not Thunderbolt. But therefore, this one makes totally up for all of that with an amazing build quality, super lightweight feel, and just great compact design and so on. So this is, this is super portable, and yeah. I'll get into more a little bit later on. Then we have the Dell, let's actually get in terms of functionality to the next, the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. This is the one with the 360 degree yoga hinge, which is actually one thing that I will give it a big plus, but not so much for ports because also USB Type-C, this though is Thunderbolt. And as you can see your headphone jack, status IDs, the speakers are on the sides here. And at least a micro SD card reader, power button, Kensington lock and the USB Type-C with display port this time though. But like I said, this one makes up for it being super light and compact as well, because as you can see here, quite similar, a little bit different aspect ratio though compared to the Huawei MateBook X, but noticeably smaller after all, and not much lighter though compared to the Surface, but it has the 360 hinge, it has pen support, and it has a touch screen. And that is just great to see. Now here you can already see the next one, the XPS 13. This is the normal laptop, the clamshell one. This one though has a little bit something different in terms of ports because you still have the old school port for charging, USB Type-C though, Thunderbolt, USB Type-A, and the, the headphone jack along with the status ID. Speaker is pretty much the same as on the two-in-one. Full-size SD card reader, which is nice to see, and another USB Type-A with the Kensington lock. So this one is definitely the most flexible one when it comes to ports. It's also pretty much just as light as the two-in-one. I think it's like 100 grams less or more. I actually don't know if I feel, yeah, I would say this one is a little bit less, but it also has less ports. But this one, super small. Of course, the bezels and so on, I will get them once I open them. The next one would be the X360 Spectre, which in terms of size is very close actually already to the surface. As you can see this here, this is already pretty much the same. It's a little bit not that deep, but in terms of ports, it's the second best as well here, because what you can see here, you have the type A headphone jack, power button, and two Thunderbolts with a headphone jack. So it also has the 360 hinge, it also has pen support, 
and that's why it makes up for a lot. And in terms of versatility, this is actually one of the very best ones, especially since it also has the full dual core. But now let's open them up and talk about, and I didn't want to show myself, let's talk about those keyboards. And I will actually this time go in the order that I like them the most. And here I'll choose the Surface Laptop. Because if I get a little bit closer in, I really like this one. First of all, the inside feels nice, but it's the layout, it's the great tactile feedback, it's the overall typing experience and I enjoy a lot. Also multiple steps of backlight, so awesome. This is the best typing experience at least for the ones that I have here. The next one would already be the Huawei MateBook X because this one feels very much like the older, the older MacBooks that I had. So a little bit more clicky, but nicely dampened, great layout, actually big buttons. Also, I think two steps of backlight, maybe even three. Great, I really, really like this. Now, the next one, and that's pretty much exactly the same. That's why I will just show it once for the Dell XPS that you can't open on both cases with one hand. So you will need two hands, but the Huawei and the Surface can be opened with one hand. So they have that going for it. But here, I said this already on every review, I'm not the biggest fan of the feedback because I don't know, it, it feels a little bit dead to me because travel is actually improved a little bit, but it still kind of bottoms out a little bit weird. And it's still fine. I could get used to it without any problems. And the layout is fine. Two levels of backlight, quiet. So overall, definitely still, I would say quite good, but there is something missing, but it's, it's fine. Totally. I don't want to complain too much about it. It's just not maybe my most favorite keyboard here though. And I've called this actually a deal breaker in my review is yeah, the X360 Spectre. First of all, mine has a defect here on this button, which is kind of dead. Then we have silver keycaps with white backlight, which makes it very hard to see once that is turned on. So that's not ideal. And it is the layout that is for me absolutely bonkers. I don't get how this is a good solution. This is just wrong in my opinion because everything is shifted slightly towards the left. And even though the feedback is quite nice, nicely dampened, quiet, this just throws me off so much. And also with, especially in Germany where we have a, a double height enter button. This is also weird to see on a quartz layout, this split up enter key. If you have ever used it, and if you've ever tried it or have no problems with the extra keys, fine. Then it is maybe actually, yeah, still a little bit behind the XPS just because of the, of the white keycaps. But in terms of feedback, it would be nice. But for me, that's a deal breaker. Now trackpads, just to really quickly cover them without actually showing them. My favorite is the one on the surface because even though it maybe doesn't feel super premium, as I said in my review, it reacts the, the best and so on. And this is nice. The pretty much same goes also for the 13 inch Dell XPS because we have a precision track, but if I'm not wrong and it reacts well, texture is nice. So all is good here. Then the MateBook X has a really well working one. And I would give that a very good because it reacts, the texture is nice and it clicks okay. But I've said this in my review, there is this little bit of a gap that I just don't like. It therefore feels a little bit flimsy. But one thing it has going for it is the fingerprint reader because that one unlocks straight from the touch directly into the system. And I really, really like that. The Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 actually has a fingerprint reader as well. If I quickly show this, but it doesn't work just as well. Here you can see that. And that's why I would say let's actually already talk about the displays. And since I won't be properly able to show any of those anyways, since it would take up so much time, I would just open it and show something. But like I said, this would just take too much time to show all the values. You could check my, my specific reviews, but if I would have to choose a winner, I would have a hard time, but I would maybe, and let's just keep it this way. It's a little bit harder to struggle with all those laptops here. My favorite is I would say actually, if you just see the display's qualities, the Huawei MateBook X, best calibration, super bright, super clear, three by two aspect ratio, I really like that. But it's maybe not the, perf the first place because the Dell XPS 13 has an even higher res display, 16 by nine, which I found better to be for split screen use because we have two windows that are a little bit wider. It felt a little bit cramped on the Huawei MateBook X. I, I'm completely sweating already, but it has touch screen and it has a great display, super high quality, well calibrated. So that's actually maybe the first place. Then the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 has a few things going for it. It has the yoga hinge and therefore I can use it as a tablet. It's just 1080p though, but 1080p a really good one. 
So I really like that as well. In terms of quality, it is a little bit behind the Surface Laptop and the MateBook X, but it makes up with this hinge for me. The last place in some way, because it's the lowest res, oh, it's actually on, on par with the Dell XPS 14 2 one but maybe just not quite as nice, the one on the XPS 360 Spectre, but all of them do a totally nice job. But like I said, the Yoga hinge on the 13 2 one definitely makes it a little bit nicer. And especially since the XPS 14 has the best quality screen, touch screen, but no hinge. It is the first place. Matebook, like I said, the best quality, but no touch screen. Surface, super nice display and touch screen, but no hinge. And the 360 has a super nice screen with a hinge, but it's no, not the most impressive one, but therefore it actually supports a pen, which the Surface Laptop does, but there it's actually useful because you can fold it up with the 360 hinge, which you can't do on the Surface. Let's check the speakers now. And I think I will actually have to, yeah, I have to actually turn on the surface because it did shut off. This is weird. So let's put that to the side and start just with the loudest one, actually. And sorry if this whole thing seems rough, but this is what it is. <laughs> okay, let's start the track here. No. Oh, it doesn't have a touch screen. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that is good enough for now. And while I'm trying to set up the other ones for the sound demo, I'm going to say you that this is the loudest one, not the best in terms of quality, because there actually there would be this one. Let me get that on the screen. And yes, I, I knew this would be quite a hard thing to handle. The Surface Laptop, and this one has a touch screen. Yeah, the Surface Laptop is my most favorite because it is a little bit less loud than the X360 Spectre and a little bit less loud than the MateBook X, but it makes up for the amazing sound because it sounds so nice, full and rich. Really enjoyed that one. But just in terms of sheer quality, I think I would actually maybe even give the second place to the X360. Because you get it, as you can see, it doesn't quite sound as warm and rich as the Surface Laptop. And it sounds very similar to something like the Huawei MateBook X because they are both a little bit hollow but super loud, so they definitely make up for that without any issues. And if I would have to prefer one or the other, I would maybe go actually for the X360, but it's actually so close with the MateBook X, they are on par. And the two Dells are pretty much the same, so I will just show off one. Yep, I would say this one is maybe the weakest of all these, but still totally fine because they also sound a little bit hollow. You have some optimization options, for example, with the Dell Max audio software, but it's totally fine enough. It's side firing. I prefer bottom firing actually, but still good enough not to be a deal breaker or not be very good. I still like them, really good, absolutely no problems. Now performance wise, I don't really have to get too much into that just to cover the specifics about each one. In terms of sheer performance, maybe the Dell XPS 14 2 in 1 is the weakest one because it only has a Y processor. So Y CPU that is just not as powerful. But especially in things like, for example, with the 1080p display in combination, in browsing with Chrome, it's super nice. And if you do just normal daily tasks like some light or photo editing, browsing the web, word editing, and so on, you won't really actually notice a difference. And that's why I have no problem at all saying that a Y CPU is totally good enough. Now then maybe in terms of performance where it's not the strongest one would already be the Y, y MateBook X because it has no fan. That's great though. But it just can't, help, just can't hold the maximum turbo boost the whole time. But it is still in normal use totally fine. And I think neither of them is really made for video or photo editing. If then you should take the ones with the U CPU and the fan. But this 
is more than enough. And then I would say the next ones are all on the same par in terms of if you use, of course, the same CPU, the Dell Express 13 2-in-1, the Surface laptop, and also the X360 Spectre. You won't really notice a difference and it doesn't really matter at all. All do normal tasks just fine. But actually, I have to say, I'm super happy with what the YCPU on the Dell Express 3 2 in one, 13 2-in-1 does. Now, in terms of heat and noise, my favorites are the two, the two noiseless ones, the two fanless ones, the 13 2-in-1 and the MateBook, because both of them are completely dead silent. A little bit of minimal coil wine is on the 13 2-in-1, which is not on the Y MateBook X. It throttles a little bit, and therefore it's a little bit more powerful than the Y CPU. And this overall combo really is great. Now the 2-in-1, and I'm sorry if I don't show the device too much, but I, I don't really know what to show really here if I'm talking about performance. The 2-in-1, maybe not as powerful, but fanless, flexible, I like it. The other ones, I would have to say, the Dell Express 14, very quiet fan, same as on the, laptop, on the Surface laptop and also on this HP, barely ever turns on and it is very subtle. I would say in terms of noise, the order, but really marginal difference, Surface Laptop, Dell Express 13, and then the XP360 Spectre, but it doesn't matter. Now, battery life is where things are very close, but not on one, the Huawei MateBook X. That one gets about six hours, which is still good, but it falls short because something like the Dell Express 13, the X360 Spectre get closer to eight hours, which the Surface can get as well. Maybe a little bit less. I felt the other ones, due to the bigger batteries, we have find the 59 watt hours. I think the lap Surface laptop has just 44, if I'm not wrong, get like a half an hour, hour even more, but therefore the Surface laptop is very well optimized. But I didn't really get too much time with the 13 inch Dell XPS Spectre, but due to the high res display, I would say maybe eight hours are possible because it definitely performed well. But at least back then I didn't get to recheck this again is the 13 2-in-1, which back then for me got like 9 and 10 hours. You would have to double check with my review, I forgot it, but that one was a long-term runner and yeah. Now, I would actually say not to make this too long and it's actually not as long as I expected it to be, is my conclusion. So, what's my favorite? I actually have a hard time deciding between two. But I think I will actually give my personal subjective number one to the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. Now, why? Because it is not the highest one in all categories or something like that. Okay, the price is a little bit high, but why I like it so much, first of all, it's light and compact. It has the yoga hinge, which I actually like because it has a touchscreen and even pen support, but I actually use this one a lot as a laptop, uh, as a tablet. So really nice with the touchscreen and 1080p, but a nice 1080p display. So great. Then... The keyboard, like I said, is still good enough, absolutely satisfying, good enough, but not as quite as on the other ones. Trackpad is really good. I really like the display calibration and with a touchscreen and 1080p scaling and so on, felt nice. Performance was more than good enough and especially in the browser, totally satisfying for me. And fanless, noiseless, great. It gets a little bit warm sometimes, especially if you use it on a lap, but it makes up for that. And with the, I think in the test, even not by much, the best battery life, this is kind of my winner. Now the next thing that I personally like a whole lot is the Huawei MateBook X. I'm not saying it's the second best. This is now out of order. The Huawei MateBook X 4 being the thinnest one, the lightest one, and the kind of most stylish, most futuristic one because it's so nice and compact. It has a beautiful display. It has a top speaker. Performance is nice. It is also fanless. And you kind of see that I prefer fanless, even though the other ones aren't loud but well, but still. But the battery life isn't all that great. And the port selection is not as great. But the same also went for the Dell XPS 13. So if you want a lot of ports, vers versatility, those are not the right ones. Because actually, if we cover the, the, the HP, that one, if you want, kind of the most versatile would be it. Because pen support, 360 degree hinge, Good port selection. Yeah, the display is nice. The speaker is very good. Performance is very good. Battery life is very good. Trackpad is good, but <laughs> it has one thing that I did not mention yet. It has kind of an audible coil wind. Once you plug it in to charge it, then you will hear some electric buzz, which was, if you use it while charging, actually quite annoying. And this abomination of a keyboard that I just 
subjectively could not get used to it. If you've tried it, if you like it, then I'm not so gonna say anything about it. Then this could be actually the best bang for your buck since it is also quite often available on sales and so on. And it offers a lot. Now, the Surface Laptop. <sighs> not the smallest one, not the most compact one. Feels great, has a superb keyboard, has a very good trackpad, a super nice display, great speaker, top performance, very good battery life. So you see, I like it a lot. What's not that great? Yeah, I just have to say it's just not super portable, which is not an issue. But in terms of ports, and especially the slowest SSD speeds of them all, it is kind of held back. It's not very versatile. Yes, it has pen support. But with an awkward angle like this one, I don't think you will use this for writing. No hinge. A hinge would have actually made a huge difference. But it is what it is. Now, one of the few old school laptops, also like the laptop, but it just makes this job a little bit better, is the Dell XPS 13. Because the amount of ports is still good. We get, yeah, actually more than on most other ones. Yeah, nice. We don't have a 360 hinge, a little bit unfortunate, but at least we get a touch screen. Since we don't have a pen support, the 360 hinge isn't all that important. And if you just want a normal but high quality laptop, then this is definitely it. Like I said already, very similar to like the 13 2-in-1, the keyboard is maybe not the best, it makes up for that with a little bit of a better trackpad. But the display is superb. The speakers are still good, even though the weakest one in this comparison. Performance is top-notch, noise and heat is very good. Perf battery life is surprisingly good, because I've reviewed an older version, not with the efficient KB Lake, and that one was noticeably weak in terms of battery life. This one actually surprised me, impressed me a lot. And I'm not quite sure what just happened. Maybe the camera shut off, but yeah, this gives you all a lot of bang for your buck. So let me try to find a way which one I would recommend for who. If you want something super portable, maybe for school, if you don't need a pen or so, just lightweight and good enough battery life, I think the MateBook will make you super happy. If you want something that will last you through the day, maybe doesn't offer so much power, but is very flexible, has pen support and overall super nice qualities, doesn't have a fan, then it's kind of my personal favorite, the 2-in-1. If you just want the most versatile, don't have an issue with the keyboard, don't have an issue with the coil one on the charging, you'll get pretty much the most flexible one here because also 360 degree hinge, pen, all qualities are top, it's not super heavy and so on, and it's mostly the cheapest, I would say. Now, if you want just an old school laptop with good qualities, but actually in this test it doesn't look like it's the very best as you have seen. There are more compact ones, there are better ones in terms of display, more flexible ones, better ports, faster ones in terms of SSD speeds. So actually for the price of 1450 in this comparison it actually looks a little bit lackluster. I can still recommend it without any issues, but yeah, it, it's not quite what I would have expected from a Surface device. And the 13 2-in-1, I guess, is the kind of go-to device for everyone. Super nice in terms of ports, super compact, lightweight, touchscreen, very beautiful one, totally fine. Um, keyboard, trackpad, display, speaker, all fine, battery life, very good. So, yep, I hope this was good enough for you. I really didn't know what else to say, not to completely break it out of everything in terms of length, because you can check each single review, but I think I, I covered the most important differences for you to choose one because I don't think a rating here is necessary because if I say the first place to the display goes to the Dell XPS but you said I seen I saw I said also that the MateBook is great but it doesn't have a touch screen I said that it has a touch screen on the Surface laptop but doesn't have the hinge and so on you see that's really subjective things but I think you can pick out now the best one for you but I don't really see anything else on the market that I would rather get than one of these. Let me know down there below if it was helpful and if it was, maybe thumbs up, subscription.